no objection. No, you're all right. With that, then, Mr. McKeska, would you please begin the announcements? And if each attorney would please prompt their client to announce. And if you're a parent here, please announce for the record when you are called. Uh, thank you, Judge Drake McKeska, attorney for the department. Mr. Tucci. Uh, yes, Alejandra Sertucci, permanency specialist for Belong. Harris and Bader, permanency supervisor with Belong. David Nelson, CASA advocate. Uh, Kurt Rudkin, attorney for father, Roland Reyes, he's father of uh, Roland Reyes. Jennifer Harris, attorney for father, Mr. Moselle, he's the father of Christian. He's not present, but I do have authorization to proceed on his behalf, Your Honor. Irene Agosta, attorney for the mother. Cecilia, how are you? Um, attorney of item for the child. Amy Harding, Hill Kentry Casa Supervisor, Guardian Ad Litem for the Children. All right, thank you. We are here today for a final trial, and um, I'm not sure exactly how the department wishes to proceed. When we were here back on November the 1st, I had um, reset the date and ordered the parties to mediate. Um, were you able to come to an agreement? Uh, we we were judge. We attended mediation on December first. Uh, we did reach an agreement uh, regarding the the final resolution of this matter. Um, however, uh, as part of that agreement, uh, Miss Pearson and Mister Reyes both agreed to execute and tender voluntary relinquishments. Uh, however, the department has not received those relinquishments as of today. When was the deadline? Uh, it, there wasn't a specific deadline in the uh, MSA judge. It just said that they would tender them prior to the trial date. Yeah. How do you wish to proceed in that regard? Uh, I mean, Judge, I would love to be able to honor the agreement that we reached with the parents. Um, I think that it is the appropriate resolution for this case, um, given all of the circumstances. Um and so I, I would like, and, and I know that we've already reset this trial once, uh, but I would like to reset the trial again uh, to give us the opportunity to be able to honor that agreement um, rather than having to set it aside and, and proceed on other, other grounds. Is there, to your knowledge, any specific reason or particular reason why the relinquishments were not tendered, or was this just due to a lack of diligence? Uh, Judge, I, I I don't know. Um, I, I know that we we mediated on the first, um, and so you know, twelve days ago. Um, so I was hopeful that we would have had them uh, prior to today. What is the response of the parties? to Mr. McKeska's request to reset for the relinquishments? Well, I'd like to respond. Uh, my client is, of course, he's in TDCJ with a lengthy prison sentence. Uh, he fully wants to honor his agreement that he made. He has no intention of with trying to withdraw that agreement, changing his agreement, or changing his mind. This is what he's wanted for quite some time. I don't see where we ever received relinquishments. Um, so I, I didn't see that one came through. But we can get that to him and get him to sign off on it. Getting those back from TDC is and getting them executed correctly has always been a challenge, but we'll do everything we can do to get that done. And Your Honor, with regard to my client, she still intends to sign the relinquishment. It's just been coordinating, setting that up with her. Um, and I have spoken with her and she does still intend to sign the relinquishment. What is your response, um, Mr. or sorry, Ms. Harris? Your Honor, my, my client has an agreement with the department regarding termination on O grounds. So um, I'm 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 fine with whenever we do this. And Ms. Harum. I have no objection, Your Honor. Um, there is one other matter I need to address with the court, but as far as the reset, I'm I think as long as we can get this done before January 20th on the dismissal date, um, I have no objection to resetting.
I have a question, Mr. McKeska, before I hear yes. from Casa. We are, as Ms. Hellrung pointed out, set for dismissal on January 20th. Ms. Harris has stated that there's an agreement to terminate her client on O grounds. Is there a problem commencing this morning as to her client and then uh, coming back for the relinquishments? There's there's not judgment. We can certainly you know elicit that that testimony from Mr. Tucci today. Are you prepared to do that? I know considering you didn't get your relinquishments, you might have been I I, I don't have specific um exhibits prepared judge to enter but i mean it is an agreement that uh and stipulation that we're going to proceed on that ground um so uh, i feel confident in our ability to elicit the appropriate testimony all right your uh, honor yes i apologize if we do go forward on mr mosel th this morning would it be possible for me to be excused i have an appointment that's supposed to start in just a couple of minutes i'm already going to be running late to it but um I, I'm not sure that I'm necessary for Mr. Mosul. If I have to stay, I will. I'm just, I wanted to make the court aware. If we do move forward with Mr. Mosul this morning, is there any objection to the court excusing Ms. Acosta while Mr. McKeska elicits that testimony? No, Your Honor. No. No, Your Honor. All right. What is Casa's position on all of this? We're okay with going forward uh, as far as another hearing if we need to, to uh, do whatever. We are happy, we are pleased with the agreement and we want to stay with the agreement that we have. Okay. Well, then it sounds as if there's no issues with um, moving the trial date back to wait for the relinquishments. Um, but again, I don't want to run up against the dismissal. I would rather buy myself the 90 days for the docket. So we'll begin the trial. We'll commence. I'm going to excuse Ms. Acosta from any further proceedings this morning. Um, and we'll commence trial as to Mr. Uh, Mosul and get enough on the record um, to satisfy the um, statute. And then Ms. Greenlee, if you could be looking at a date sometime in January or reset how much time do you think you're all going to need 30 minutes an hour uh an hour would be s sufficient judge uh, i i did take a look at the the J january dockets and i know the one on the 17th only has one setting currently miss greenley you see any issue with january 17th i'm looking that up right now now granted i only looked at the cur dockets so i don't know if anything another county has set that day as well sure no, we only have um, we have one hearing at nine thirty. I can set this for ten. Let's set it to ten on January seventeenth. So we're going to commence this morning. After sufficient testimony, we will recess and come back January seventeenth at ten. Will that be by Zoom? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Did the parties waive opening? Yes, Your Honor. Any other housekeeping issues we need to take up? No, Your Honor, at the end of the testimony, I just have one other issue I need to address with the court. Okay. Then with that, Mr. McKeska, you may call your first witness. Uh, thank you, Judge. Uh, Judge, I'd like to call uh, Mr. Tucci. Chief Ben Sworn, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Tucci, can you please state your name for the record? Alejandra Sertuccio. And how are you currently employed? Uh, I'm a permanency specialist with Belong. Okay, and are you the permanency specialist that is assigned to this case? Yes. And how long have you been the permanency specialist for this case? Uh, since May of this year. Okay, um, and whenever you became the, the permanency specialist, did you uh, review the, uh, the case file? Yes, I did. And are you familiar with um, the, the events that took place prior to you becoming the, uh, the case or the, the permanency specialist for this case? Yes. Okay. Um, do you recall the, um, nature of the removal of, of Christian and Roland? Uh, yes. Neglectful supervision. Okay. And what were the, the events that led to uh, the removal of, of Christian and Roland? Uh, I believe they were left home alone and, um, Roland fell off of the bed and got hurt. 
Okay. Um, and did the department conduct an, an exigent removal of the children in this case? Yes. Okay. Um, as a part of, uh, or sorry, let me scratch that. Um, whose care were the children in uh, when they were removed? Uh, I believe it was Ms. Pearson. Okay. Um, and at, at the time of removal, um, do you know where Mr. Moselle was located? I'm not aware. I, I believe he might have been incarcerated at this point. Okay. Um, and then with regard to, to Mr. Reyes, do you have um, any recollection of, of where he was at the time of removal? Was he with Ms. Pearson? Sorry, I said was he. He was with Ms. Pearson. Okay. Uh, Hold on. Do you know when Mr. Reyes uh, was incarcerated? I don't have that date. Okay. Um, so would it surprise you uh, that Mr. Reyes was already incarcerated uh, whenever the children were removed as part of this proceeding? That would surprise me, yes. Okay. Um, as, as part of this case, um, did the department uh, and or belong prepare a um, family plan of service for Mr. Rizal? Yes. Okay, and do you know uh, what the tasks and services were on Mr. Moselle's family plan of service? Uh, yes, it would be proof of employment, um, stable housing, proof of income, a psychological and individual counseling uh, following a psychosocial assessment, uh, substance abuse treatment, and domestic violence courses. I believe that's it. And... Um, was Mr. Moselle ordered to complete those services by this court? Yes. Okay. Has Mr. Moselle been able to um, engage in those court-ordered services? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, why has Mr. Moselle not been able to engage in those services? Uh, due to his incarceration and the limitations of the services that are available to him at his facility. Okay. Uh, Judge, I believe if the, the intent was just to commence, then we've sufficiently addressed those issues. I agree. Um, Ms. Pelron, what was it that you needed to take up? Your Honor, um, I the maternal grandmother, um, Billy Cleary, has contacted me requesting to be um, considered for placement of Christian. Um, she states that she has changed her mind and is now willing to be placement for Christian. Um, I've had numerous conversations with Christian and as his attorney, um, I am aware that he would like to be with his grandmother. So as his attorney, um, I am bringing that to the court at this time. Response, Mr. McCaskill. Uh, Judge, we've been down this road before. Um, this is not the first time that Christian has been in the care of the department. Uh, I believe he was removed in late 2020, early 2021. Um, we had placement with the grandmother at that during the course of that case. Um, even though that case resulted in reunification, that, that placement wasn't necessarily the best for Christian. Uh, we've tried it during the course of this case. Um, it, it hasn't or wasn't the best for Christian. Um, so the department is, is opposed to placement with Ms. Cleary. Um, we don't believe that she has the capability to meet all of Christian's needs. Um, I, I believe that she gets frustrated with him. Um, she's, you know, unable to, to deal with his behaviors and make sure that all of his needs are met. Um, I, I just don't think that the placement with her is, is in his best interest. Awesome. Uh, I don't believe this is in the best interest of, uh, Christian, uh, you know, I, I don't see us going back and redoing something that we've already tried two or three times and thinking that we'll have a different outcome. Uh, I think the outcome will end up being the same, and it is not in his best interest. I think we need to look at other options. Considering the intent of the parents to relinquish or to have their rights terminated, I'm going to decline to get any other positions at this time. Ms. Hellrong, at this time, I'm going to decline your request to place the child with the grandmother. Um, we can certainly talk about it in the future, but right now we think it's not something we're willing to pursue. Okay. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
All right, then we will recess at this time and recommence trial January 17th, 2024 at 10 a.m. All other orders already in place remain in effect. And uh, anyone who is here today as a witness is ordered to be back as a witness on January the 17th. Anything I failed to address at this time? No, Your Honor. Okay. No, Your Honor. Thank you all for your time and your service. All parties are excused. Ms. Berry, will you hang out just for a moment, please? Yes, Judge. I know you from Bear County. Uh, I retired from Bear County. Yeah, I, I used to work in Bear County quite a bit as an attorney, and I, re I remembered you. Oh, um, okay. You working uh, with Lisa now? Well, um, this is the first time I'm subbing in for one of the courts for her. Mm -hmm. I work part time, even though I'm retired. Uh, I only work via Zoom, and um, so I work for Bear County uh, on just the mental health court docket. Mm -hmm. I work for Maverick County for Judge Susan Reed. Okay. Uh, and so I told Lisa just a couple of days ago that if she needed me for anything, I would help her. So uh, she said, yeah. Uh, I said, well, I'll, I'll help you as long as it's Zoom. I'll, I'll be happy to help you. So this is my first assignment. Well, we got plenty of it. And um, if you want to reach out to her, let her know that we just reset this trial. If she wants to keep you on it, well, glad to have you back for that or anything else. But just wanted to say hello. And it's been years since I've seen you. I'm sure you don't remember me, but I remembered you. Um, Thank you. Uh, from, uh, somebody what hearing was I working know. for at the time? Do you remember? I don't. I um, my career with Judge uh, Norma Gonzalez, who's still there. She's still sitting on the bench. Did you ever uh, report for, um, oh my goodness, now his name is escaping me. There was one male I worked for in Bear County, David Peoples. Might have been Peoples. Randy Diaz was another male I worked for in Bear County. Yeah. It's hard for me to remember which judge it was. I just remember your name, Mary Berry. <laughs> well, thank you. It's good seeing you again. Good I had a question. Too. I've never done this docket. Uh, those people that announced, they did it so quickly. And, and there was only one that I, I wasn't for sure, but her name didn't match who she said she was. Um, so that was my only question because I have nothing in front of me except the cause number. Um, what was that so can I reach out? Who would I reach out to just to get the name? Um, I could tell you probably right now. Uh, her her screenshot was Godson or something. G-O-D-S-O-N. I can't. Uh, but she wasn't an attorney. Goldie Rapson. Rapson. Yeah. That's yes. It. Was that her? Jessica. Was that her that actually was that her that was on that screen? Goldie Rabbit? Yes. Okay. I just yeah. Okay. Well, I heard something else, which is not a good thing. <laughs> Anyhow, right. uh, thank you so much. Uh yeah, I'll tell Lisa about this since it's continued okay. on the 17th and until I'll be happy to take this case just because it is continuing. Uh if okay. you need me, okay. Thank just, you. And she also told me this is the only thing I needed to do was this hearing. Yes, ma'am. Um, everything else is I'll record. Well, I look forward to seeing you again then. Yes, ma'am. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Mr. Cabrera, is that you? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, my name is Marco Cabrera. I'm here covering for uh, uh, Richard Saldivar. He had a, a, another hearing that uh, he wasn't able to get out of. I knew you would be covering. I just didn't know that you would be going by Stabby McThroat Punch. Oh, I'm sorry. That is actually my car. Um, <laughs> I apologize, Your Honor. Let, let me change that right now. I already changed it. You're good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to include that that pseudonym in the order, just by the way. It's not my first rodeo <laughs> with uh, interesting Zoom names. <laughs> County, Texas. Mr. McKeska, would you please begin the announcement? Uh, yes, Judge. Drake McKeska, attorney for the department. Carol McCabe, family-based supervisor. Lucinda Mance for the mother, Melissa Gallimore, and I believe she is on, on she's present. She is. Ms. Gallimore, would you please unmute and announce? She doesn't have audio. Might be losing her. Let's see. I think she's trying to figure it out. You can go ahead and announce now, Mr. Cabrera. 
Uh, Marco Cabrera, attorney uh, covering for Richard Saldivar, attorney for children. Thank you. Miss Mance, it looks like she's going to have a pervading, continuing audio issue on her side. So I don't know if you want to try to get her on the phone. That might be I'm faster. going to I'm going to call her, um, but she and her mother. Um, I think are on the phone. Let me let me try to do that real quick. There's two different numbers, so I'll try. No problem. And if you could just have her on speaker announce her name, please. Yes, Ms. Gallimore, can you hear the judge? Yes, I can. And can you please announce that you are present and ready to proceed? I am present and ready to proceed. Thank you. Say your name, please. Melissa Mr. Gallimore. Mikeska, this is not a TIF case, correct? That That's correct, Judge. It's filed under uh, Chapter 264. Hmm. Okay. What is the plan this morning? Um, Judge, I actually haven't had a chance to talk with uh, with Ms. Mance about this matter. Um, so if I could have just a, a couple minutes to confer with her and Mr. Cabrera, that'd be fantastic. That would be fine. You're already uh, assigned to room two. So I'll put them in room two. Mr. Cabrera, you're going to get a breakout room notification. You can just go in there Thank and confer, you. please. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Mance, you're back. Is your client still with you? Yes, Judge, she is. Okay. Mr. McKeska, do you want to state the terms and conditions of the agreement, please? Uh, yes, sir. The parties agreed that uh, Ms. Gallimore will uh, complete services under the court order services case. Um, the services that are outlined in the affidavit were um, that she would complete a drug and alcohol assessment and follow the recommendations from the assessment, complete requests for random drug testing to include oral UA and hair follicle testing, to complete a psychological evaluation and follow recommendations. Um, to attend uh, individual therapy, to complete a domestic violence victims program, um, and then to sign all necessary releases um, for the department to communicate with providers, and then to follow the safety plans created in this case. What is the safety plan? Uh, my understanding is the current safety plan is, uh, it, or Ms. McKenna shaking her head, no, I, I believe the mother is living with the maternal grandparents. Ms. McKenna? Uh, yes, Judge. No formal safety plan right now, but she is living with her, her parents. You believe that that is in the best interest of the child? Yes, Judge. And do you believe that this agreement is in the best interest of the child? Yes, sir. To your knowledge, is everything in the affidavit that was filed with the petition true and correct? Yes, sir. All right. And you believe that these orders are necessary to alleviate the abuse of abuse, excuse me, the effects of the abuse or neglect that has occurred? Yes, sir. And you believe it's necessary to reduce the continuing danger to the physical health or safety of the child caused by an act or failure to act of the parent? Yes, sir. And you believe it's necessary to reduce the substantial risk of abuse or neglect caused by an act or failure to act of the parent? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Ms. May is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, Judge, it is, but I would like to um, have the exact terms of the safety plan for future reference for mom read into the record by Ms. Marquetta. So there is no safety plan. There isn't one right now. But yeah. I know the pleading asked for one, and so if there, it's going to become part of the order that I just want to make sure that mother knows can she be unsupervised with her child? Is it just living at her parents' home? Um, so I just want that clear for the mother's sake. Ms. McKenna? Yes, Judge. I was going to jump in, but I thought I, I better wait till he calls on me. So, yes, sir. Uh, there is no safety plan right now. However, if there is one put in place, I, I was asking that she would follow any safety plans put in place after we talk to you, Ms. Mance. So she does not have any specific conditions on residing with her mother or being supervised at any time. Correct. She is, there's no safety plan. She is not supervised right now. And the department's not asking for one at this time. We are not. Okay. Thank you. 
Ms. Gallimore, you heard the agreement that was stated by Mr. McKeska? Melissa. Yes, I, I said yes, sir. All right. And you understand what's expected of you? Yes, sir. You have the opportunity to discuss this with your attorney? Yes, sir, I have. And this is your voluntary agreement? Yes, sir. You were not forced in any way to agree to it or made any promises or inducements to get you to agree? No, sir. You're asking the court to adopt and approve the agreement at this time? Yes. All right. Mr. Cabrera, as far as you know, is this the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Um, it, it is the agreement, uh, as as uh, Mr. Salver understood. He is, he is in agreement to, to, to those terms. Um, if I could also just give his report briefly. Please. Okay. He, he did meet with uh, with the family earlier this week with the grandparents uh, in the home. He is confident of the grandparents to be protective uh, uh, with the understanding that if any of that, if any terms are broken, if anything goes sideways, uh, we're going to be asking for a safety plan. Um, he did also request, you know, I, I understand that the uh, this court has no jurisdiction of the child, but he is, he, 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 was concerned about child care and wanted to ask the department to, to assist the family in a, in, in a, a, a CCS application for child care. Any thoughts on child care, Ms. McKenna? Uh, we would be all for it. If she can find a, a daycare opening, we would be happy to assist with that. Okay. Does that address your concern or Mr. Saldivar's concern, Mr. Cabrera? It, it does, Your Honor. Okay. All right then. Uh, court finds that um, was was mom served? Actually, I don't think I asked that question. She was judge. She was personally served on December first, twenty twenty three. Court finds mom was personally served December the first, twenty twenty three. Had notice of this hearing and has appeared with her attorney. Court finds that the parties have entered into an agreement. Um, court finds the agreement is in the best interest of the child and that the services are necessary to alleviate the abuse or uh, the effects of abuse or neglect that has occurred to reduce the continuing danger to the physical health or safety of the child caused by an act or failure to act to the parent and reducing a substantial risk of abuse or neglect caused by an act or failure to act to the parent. Court finds that the uh, Mother, Ms. Gallimore, is to complete a drug and alcohol assessment. Right, well, let me back up. She's to complete the services outlined in the affidavit to include a drug and alcohol assessment and any recommendations, drug testing and um, a psychological evaluation and recommendations to, con to complete therapy and to participate in domestic violence program and to sign any and all releases. Court finds that there's no safety plan at this time that has been created. However, um, as the ad litem has requested, if a safety plan is necessary in the future, court orders the parties to staff how that safety plan would look uh, before it's implemented. And then, and obviously, barring any emergency. Um, and then court orders the department to assist with daycare. And I'm going to order Ms. Gallimore, if she needs it, to obtain it. I'm going to order her to seek it out, find it, and if she does, then the department is to assist with that. We're going to have a compliance hearing February the 14th, 2024 at 10 a.m. February 14th, that's Valentine's Day, um, at 10 a.m. And Ms. Gallimore, I want to tell you that this is uh, one of the least effective or least restrictive, excuse me, methods for you to get services in this case. Um, the children are not being removed from you. You're not being restricted from the children. There's no changes to conservatorship. All you're required to do in this case is take care of your children and work these services. But if you don't work these services, you don't stay in touch with the department or your attorney then something more restrictive might happen. And I don't want to see that happen. I want to see you get through this case, get the help you need, your children get the help they need, and you all move on with your life, okay? Okay. So just whatever you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, please comply with that. Hopefully we can get through this case without too many hiccups on a pretty tight timeline. And 
um, move on down the road. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Well, I actually have two, two things I'd like to say. The first one is, um, with the daycare, I already have a daycare that I've already gotten all the quality, like all of the documents needed for that daycare for him to start. Um, that head start is the place in Bernie. And, um, as far as the other, um, the other day, daycares in, in here in Bernie, when I tried to contact them and, and, uh, they asked me questions, I, I had to tell them that it was a CPS case. They would not accept it because it's burning and they don't, they already, they only have a few spots for CPS cases. So I went ahead and did it myself at the head start. I got all the documentation. We're just waiting for him to, we're waiting for a, um, for somebody to call us and let us know when there's a spot available. Okay. That's, other- that's something that you need to just stay in touch with Miss Manson and Miss McKenna okay. or whoever's helping you from the department. Um, the, I don't have any direct <laughs> uh, involvement in the, those sorts of things. So just work with your attorney on that. What was your next question? Oh, my next question was, do I, I'm, um, I'm already in the process of getting a, a counselor and I was called, I was seeing if I could use that counselor or do I have to go through it through the system or. That's again, another question for the department, okay. um, because okay. they have contracts with certain counselors that allow the services to be paid for, um, not by you. If you get your own counselor, I don't know, there could be a, an issue. So talk to them about that, which also reminds me, and I don't think I did this. Um, in fact, I know I didn't do it. Uh, Miss Gallimore, do you have the funds available to you to afford an attorney? No. All right. Do you have anything you could sell that would enable you to afford an attorney? No. Are you receiving any type of governmental assistance at this time? Yes. All right. What are you receiving? Um, I'm receiving food stamps in WIC and I am on the housing in San Antonio. They haven't called me up for my apartment. Okay. Well, that's what I needed to know. I'm going to continue your indigency status then, and I'll continue to, uh, have Miss Mance represent you in this case. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck to you, ma'am. Hope to hear great things when we come back in February. Mr. Cabrera, thank Thank you again for stepping in this morning. Thank you, Anna. All right. With that, all parties are excused. Thank you. Judge, Judge, I don't see my client. I represent the mother, Miss Owing. Right. I don't have her in the waiting room. Okay. Your Honor, she's not been um, she has not been served, but she has been in communication with the department and indicated a willingness to appear. Why don't we see if we can get a hold of her? See if we can get her log in. Department of Family, excuse me, Department of Family Protective Services versus Marin Owings in the 198 Judicial District Court of Van Aaron County, Texas. Court is hearing this case from Kendall County. Is there any objection? No objection. No objection. With that, Ms. Kyler Green, would you please begin the announcements? Yes, Shauna, good afternoon. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Irving Santiago, CPS investigator. Carol McKetta, family based supervisor. Anna Swallow, attorney ad litem for the respondent mother, Marin Owings. Ms. Owings, could you unmute and state your name, please? Yes, my name is Marin Owings. And Kathleen Savage, attorney ad litem for the child, Your Honor, ready. Maria Salinas, family based safety service caseworker. Hands down. We're here for a court ordered services case today. Ms. Kyla Green, how do the parties wish to proceed? Well, Your Honor, I. I um I, I actually don't know if after Ms. Swallow had an opportunity to speak with her client whether or not they're in agreement, but in the communications that the department investigators had with her, I, I believe that there was. So I'll, I'll let her talk to that. Yes, Judge, my client's in agreement. Okay, what is the agreement? Well, Your Honor, the uh, department is asking for uh, Ms. Owings to participate in the Parents as Teachers programs as part of the TFF program. Um, she's to have a psychological evaluation and um, follow all recommendations. She's also to have a drug and alcohol assessment and follow all recommendations. There's a safety plan that's also been implemented um, where there is 24-7 supervision of uh, Ms. Owings with her child um, that needs to continue to be implemented. And the department also requests that since Ms. Owings has made an appearance today that we're relieved of any obligation to 
uh, surfer. All right, Ms. Swallow, any objection to your client entering an appearance today? No, Judge. All right, and does your is that the agreement as you understood it, Ms. Swallow? Yes, Judge. All right. Um, who is the investigator on this? Mr. Santiago. All right, Mr. Santiago, is everything in the affidavit that was submitted at this point in time still true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes, Judge. All right, and do you believe that these services that Ms. Carla Green has stated are necessary to alleviate the effects of abuse or neglect yes, that sir. has occurred? Yes, sir. You believe they're necessary to reduce the continuing danger to the physical health or safety of the child caused by an act or failure to act with the parent? Yes, sir. And do you believe they're necessary to reduce the substantial risk of abuse or neglect caused by an act or failure to act with the parent? Yes, Judge. All right. Um, Ms. Owings, you heard the agreement that Ms. Kyla Green stated? Yes, Your Honor. Is that the agreement that you made? Yes, sir. Did you have the opportunity to discuss it with Ms. Swallow just now? Yes. Do you understand what's expected of you? I do. Did you enter into the agreement voluntarily? Yes, Your Honor. Were you forced in any way or made any promises to get you to agree to it? No, sir. Are you asking the court to adopt and approve that agreement today? Yes. All right. Thank you. Ms. Savage, do you Thank believe you, that this agreement is in the best interest of the children? Yes, Your Honor, I do. And is that the agreement as you understood it? Yes, it is. Anything you want to add? I was able to visit with um, Opal with her mom yesterday at placement, and she's doing what really well. Um, it's a safe place. We've got the paternal grandparents there as well, additional support. So I do think that is a good place for her right now. Um, and I'm in agreement to mom participating in this program. Okay. Ms. Owings, do you at this point in time have a job? Uh, no, I do not. Do you have any income at all? No, sir. Do you have anything that you could sell that would help you to pay for an attorney? No, sir. Are you receiving any type of governmental assistance at this time? Um, uh, my case is on hold, but I was previously um, getting food stamps. Uh, and I will be um, on Medicaid. Okay. Are you asking the court to find you indigent at this time for purposes of this suit? Yes, sir. Uh, court will make an indigency finding and maintain Ms. Swallow um, as the appointed attorney for Ms. Owings. <clears throat> court finds that Ms. Owings has made an appearance today by her agreement and that it is in the best interest of the child for the court to order services in this case. Court finds that there's sufficient evidence to support a finding that the child has been a victim of abuse or neglect, or is it substantial risk of abuse or neglect, and there's a continuing danger to the child's physical health or safety caused by an act or failure to act with the parent. Um, the child is a candidate for foster care. Court will approve the agreement of the parties for the mother, Ms. Marin Owings, to do the parents' as teachers program, to submit to a psychological evaluation and follow the recommendations therein to submit to a drug and alcohol assessment, follow the recommendations therein, and to agree to abide by the rules of the safety plan, which requires 24 hours supervision. Court finds this agreement to be in the best interest of the children. Our next hearing will be a compliance hearing March the 8th, 2024 at 10 a.m. Ms. Owings, I need you to understand that this is the least restrictive way to get help through the Texas Family Code when it comes to working with the department, okay? If you don't do these services, or you don't follow through, or you don't maintain contact, and you don't improve, then there might be something more restrictive involving your family. And I don't want to see that happen. I don't know. You don't want to see that happen. So just want to make sure you understand that you need to take advantage of this program. Okay? Yes, sir. I understand. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Anything further from anyone else? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. I'll see you all back March the 8th at... 10 a.m. Nothing further. Thank you all for your time and your service. All parties are excused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That, Mr. McKeska, would you please begin the announcements? Yes, Your Honor. Drake McKeska, attorney for the department. Ms. Winky. Samantha Winky, family-based safety services worker. Carol McKenna, family-based supervisor. 
Ana Swallow, attorney ad litem for the respondent father, Juan Rodriguez. Juan, will you please unmute and state your name? Uh, my name is Juan Rodriguez, um, Rosa's dad. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Joe Mursky, Hill Country, Hill Country, Casa. Deborah Fuller, attorney ad litem for the child. Goldie Robson, Hill Country, Casa, guardian ad litem. Michelle Acevedo for the mother, Natasha Gilbert. Natasha, can you unmute yourself and announce for the court? <clears throat> Natasha Gilbert, mother of Rosa. Irene Agosta appointed as the guardian ad litem for Natasha Gilbert. <clears throat> you haven't announced. Go ahead and do so. Everybody? I'm Sonia Torres, and I am the current guardian for Rosa. All right, Mr. McKeska. Let's go ahead and hear the terms and conditions of your agreement, please. Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, the parties have agreed that the department will be named as the temporary managing conservator of the child. The parents will be named as temporary possessory conservators of the child. We also agreed that the or to ask the court to defer child support and medical support. Uh, we've agreed to uh, ask the court to order the parties to um, attend a family group conference, develop the family plans of service, that are, will be narrowly tailored to address the reasons for removal in this case. Uh, the parents will have visitation for one hour a week supervised by the department. We're also asking the court to authorize the parties to be able to increase that visitation by agreement and based on compliance with the family plan of service. Uh, and finally, Judge, uh, parties have agreed the department will conduct a home study on the home of Sonia Torres. I believe that process has already started um, and that um, there will not be a change in Rosa's placement uh, without a prior court order. Is that the entire agreement? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Acevedo, is that your understanding of the agreement? It is, Your Honor. Ms. Paul? Yes, Judge. I would like clarification on where the visitation will occur. Um, it would occur in Kerr County. Okay, is that where the child is placed? Uh, I believe she's in either Kerr or Kendall County. Okay, I would request, my client does not have transportation, so I would request that um, the visits occur. It, I thought the child was in Fredericksburg, is that incorrect? Uh, Ms. Winky, can you give us clarification? Um, yes, the uh, child is residing in Gillespie County. Okay, that is Fredericksburg. So I would request that the visits occur where the child is, and that's also where my client resides. Any objection to that? No, Judge, I believe we can make those accommodations. And um, secondly, Judge, if I may, um, we held a, the timing of things, we had to hold the family group conference for my client yesterday. Um, and the issue of drug testing came up and there's no drug testing facilities in Fredericksburg. And there was a discussion with the with Belong, and I believe we came to an agreement that they would transport him to drug testing, at least for his initial hair test. And I, I want to make sure that's still the situation. I mean, if, if I, I didn't attend the FGC yesterday, Judge, but if that's what agree, it was agreed to, then I would expect that we would honor that agreement. I would just like to hear um, that that is so that I can, if I, not, then I'd like to put on testimony of it. I just received confirmation that was the agreement. I, and I, I mean, I understand the timing of things, uh, but these are also issues that are more appropriate for the status hearing. Um, and they weren't brought up whenever we were in caucus, but um, that that's the agreement. And the belong will provide that transportation. Thank you. It's just he's already being sent to drug testing. And if he can't make it there, he's going to be. It's going to count against him. So I appreciate the explanation. And I would like to just get that on the record. So noted. Um, I don't hear any other objection to it. So it shouldn't be an issue. Um, Miss Acosta, as the second attorney appointed for the mother, Miss Gilbert, do you agree to this? 
Yes, Your Honor. And you believe that Ms. Gilbert understands the agreement and understands what's expected of her? Yes, Your Honor. I've discussed it with her. Okay. And you're satisfied uh, with her agreeing to this and participating in the services? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Casa, is this your understanding of the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Acevedo, did I skip you? No, Judge, you asked me. Okay, thought so. Okay, then um, Ms. Skip Gilbert. Me. Did I skip you? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Fuller. <laughs> that's that's my understanding of the agreement. Okay, and I knew I'd skip somebody. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Ms. Gilbert, did you hear the agreement stated by Mr. McKeska? Yes, Your Honor. As long as I have one uh, uh, question to ask. Your Honor, what is your question? If uh, I don't, as long as that you can do, um, and when we do the visits, the hour visits, if you can make sure the when he's not around, when I go, when I leave the building, but that's the only thing I ask. When I do, when I get done seeing my daughter. Okay, so you just want to just want to make sure that. Miss yes, Gilbert Your Honor. and Mr. Rodriguez yeah. are not together at any point in time. Is there any? I don't see why that would be a problem for anybody. It's because Your Honor, me uh, at the time he'll go blame me for everything you, and you don't have to. You don't have to tell me right now, Miss Gilbert. I understand. Yes, sir. Okay? All yes, right. sir. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. I just need you to answer my questions, okay? This is the agreement yes, that you agreed that you made. Yes, sir. You had the chance to discuss it with your attorneys, Miss Acevedo and Miss. Acosta? Yes, sir. I talked to him this morning because I didn't get the chance to do my teeth this morning, so I postponed it to come okay. here. And this is, did you enter into this agreement voluntarily? Yes, sir. I did it myself. Nobody because it's, I have to do what's best for my daughter. I understand. Nobody forced you into it? No, sir. It's, it's just me. I, okay. I, I sat there and think long and hard. Okay. That's good. And are you asking me to approve the agreement? Like I, like, I, like I explained to my lawyer, as long as I get to see my daughter and then as long as I get to do what I have to do to get my kid back, I'll do it. Okay. Because she's my only thing you have left. Okay. No, I, understand. I, do. I understand. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez, I'm going to ask you the same questions. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Is this the yeah. agreement that you made? Okay. Uh, what agreement, sir? Did you hear everything that Mr. McKeska said? Uh, Did you hear anything Mr. McKeska said? No, sir. Sorry. All right. He said that you agreed to the Department of Family Protective Services being the temporary managing conservatorship of your, of your child and that mm -hmm. you would be a temporary possessory conservator of your child. And oh, that... Yeah, and you would work services. Yes, sir. That's the agreement you made? Yes, sir. Did you make that agreement voluntarily? Yes, sir. I uh, chose to do that. Yes, sir. All right. And did anybody force you into it or make you feel no, like sir. you had to do this? No, sir. I, um, for the best choice for my daughter, yes, sir. I agreed to do these terms. All right. You're asking the court to approve the agreement today? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, then. <clears throat> Miss Winky, do you believe that this agreement is in the best interest of the children or the child? Excuse me. Yes, Your Honor, I do. And as far as you know, is everything in your affidavit at this point in time true and correct? Yes, sir. All right. And do you believe that there was a danger to the physical health or safety of the child caused by an act or failure to act with a person entitled to possession? And for the child to remain in the home is contrary to the welfare of the child? I do. You believe the urgent need for protection required the immediate removal of the child and reasonable efforts consistent with the circumstances and providing for the safety of the child were made to eliminate or prevent the child's removal? Yes. And you believe reasonable efforts have been made to enable the child to return home, but there's a substantial risk of continuing danger if the child is returned home? Yes. Court will take judicial notice that both parents waived service on November the 28th, 2023. 
court makes a finding that Miss Gilbert and Miss Acosta both have been appointed to represent, excuse me, Miss Acevedo and Miss Acosta have both been appointed to represent Miss Gilbert and that they have explained the agreement to her and the court feels she is competent to understand what's expected of her. Um, Ms. Fuller, do you have anything to add? I just want to say that the child's in a very uh, safe and loving environment. She's being very well taken care of and I'm hoping that the parents get started on their services so uh, we can eventually increase the, the visitation uh, and uh, have them brought back into her life on a more consistent basis. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Anything further from CASA? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Then the court will adopt and approve the agreement of the parties. The court will name the Department of Family Protective Services as a temporary managing conservator of the child. will name the parents, Natasha Gilbert and Juan Rodriguez, as temporary possessory conservators. The court will defer child support and medical support at this time. The court will order the parties to a family group conference to develop family plans of service that are narrowly tailored to address the concerns that brought the child into the care of the department and belong. The court will order that the parents shall have one hour of visitation per week separately. There's to be no contact between Ms. Gilbert and Mr. Rodriguez when their visitations occur. Court will authorize the parties to agree, increase the agreement um, for visitation as um, appropriate. And, and you know, as we move forward, whatever you all believe is in the best interest of the child, the court will authorize. Court will order that the visitation for Mr. Rodriguez is to occur in Fredericksburg. I believe it's for both parents, but definitely for Mr. Rodriguez as requested by Ms. Swallow. And the court will order Belong to assist in Mr. Rodriguez's transportation regarding drug testing if he cannot be tested in Fredericksburg. Um, court will order the parties to conduct a home study on the home of Sonia Torres. If it is not already in progress, which I believe it is, then that is to be expedited. No changing of Rosa's placement without prior order of the court. At this point in time, the court will maintain the indigency status for both parents, maintain Ms. Swallow, Ms. Acevedo, and Ms. Acosta and their appointments as necessary. Our status hearing is going to be January the 10th, 2024 at 2.30. It's January the 10th, 2024 at 2.30. I have to admonish both parents. The state of Texas gives parents in CPS cases 12 months, one year, to demonstrate that you can provide a safe, stable, violence-free, and drug-free home for your child. If you cannot do so, your rights to your child could be restricted further as they are now or terminated. Mr. McKeska, is there anything I failed to address? No, Judge. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you all for your time and your service in this case. I look forward to seeing you all in January. If nothing further, all parties are excused, and that concludes our docket for today. Have a good evening.